perhaps as Tristan McKenzie was making his way to progressive field tonight coming down East 9th Street he stopped and gazed up at the Bob Feller statue trying to take in and soak up the moment. Maybe he looked down at the plaque and realized it was 84 years ago when Bob Feller made his debut that would eventually launch him on a Hall of Fame career with the Cleveland Indians. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning, Tribe and the Tigers here tonight. But the big story is the Major League debut of Tristan McKenzie. He's a young man just three weeks ago, uh, turned 23. And, Rick, you look at this guy and you wonder, is this the future of the Cleveland Indians in terms of their pitching staff? Well, we've certainly heard a lot about him. Uh, he was drafted in 2015. Uh, he has a very good arm. Uh, and he's a slight built guy, but I'll tell you what, he's made 59 starts down in the minor leagues. He's 26 and 16. You see the numbers there. He has a good fastball, supposedly an excellent curveball. So we can see if that plays tonight. He, he has been working on a changeup and a slider. And if he can continue to just go out there, enjoy that night. We'll see how nervous he is. There will be no fans in the stands. Hopefully he can go out there and put some zeros on the board until the Indians can score. Yeah, obviously that would be nice for the Indians offensively to get some early runs like they did last night. But then to have McKenzie settle in and pitch well, you just never know for sure. But as we've said, the Indians – you know, their player development staff has always done a good job of preparing guys for moments just like this. Yeah, they've never been overmatched. So, you know, some of the guys we've seen in the last few years, Savali, Bieber, uh, Plesak, you know, they go out there. Hey, five innings would be great. He hasn't pitched since 2018 in the minor leagues. Hopefully he can give him a solid five innings for his first start. Big story on display here tonight at Progressive Field. And we'll be back with the first pitch. We'll hear from Alan Jensen and we'll check in with Andre Knott straight ahead. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by Spectrum Mobile. Spectrum Mobile has unlimited talk, text, and data. Save up to 40%. Go to SpectrumMobile.com today. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit BuyAToyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. By Fred Martin Superstore. Our used cars come with a free lifetime powertrain warranty. And by Akron Children's Hospital, taking extra precaution at every location to keep your family safe. Excitement because these guys have all kind of grown up and watched Tristan and they know it's been 723 days since he had competition against another team. So I talked to Shane Bieber one of his best friends in the whole system and he told him go out and be yourself who cares that it's been that long since you last started a game. We also talked to one of the Indians pitching coaches Ruben Nieble about what he's told Tristan about this start. There's a slider that he developed. Uh, you know, this is this is a newer pitch for him that he's developed in the last year or so, and he's worked hard on uh, on making his uh, changeup serviceable as well. So uh, we should be seeing a, a guy with a four pitch mix, but uh, fastball, curveball being his primary weapons, and and a competitor. I mean, this this guy likes to win, and, and he's going to go out there, and he's not he's not going to. He's not going to give in to hitters. Um, you know, that, I think that's one thing that we can surely feel comfortable that he won't be doing. And guys, Shane Bieber basically said the same thing to me earlier tonight. He said this is not going to be too big for Tristan. But he told Tristan, be yourself, be confident. Don't let all the social media and all the friends texting you be a part of this. Erase them. That was an issue that he had. Go out and pitch, and then you go talk to all your friends. Well, well you're seeing him be bopping around in the dugout trying to Stay calm, trying to stay cool and not let those feelings of anxiety get the better of him. I think once he gets out there and throws the first pitch, he'll settle in. And, and it may help a little bit because there, there is nobody in the stands. Go out there, take a deep breath. Once the game started in that first pitch, then you can settle in a little bit and, and get into what you're going to try and do. And hopefully uh, he's going to go out there. And I, I hope he gives him at least five innings. And Tristan McKenzie's going to be... Uh, the starting pitcher today. You look at his numbers, it's the Akron numbers. Uh, 16 games, 16 stars, 7 and 4, 268. Um, and that it was in 2018. So he didn't pitch in 19. He's getting a chance today. You can see he's a lean guy, but let's see that ball come out of his hand, and he will be the Nissan starting pitcher for the Indians. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineup for Ron Garden hires Detroit Tigers tonight. Victor Reyes in the leadoff spot. Willie Castro, former Indians farm man, will bat second. Miguel Cabrera, the veteran, hitting third. Then it's Jonathan Scope coming off a big night. Chamber Candelario 
Jacoby Jones in the sixth spot. Then it's Christian Stewart, Austin Romine, and Isaac Paredes, the rookie batting ninth. Well, let's check out the defense brought to you by Spitzer. It'll be Luke Lowe gets a start in left field tonight. The Shields in center, San, uh, Domingo Santana over and right. On the infield, Ramirez and Lindor on the left side. Hernandez and Santana on the right side. Perez behind the plate. Lance Barksdale will call the balls and strikes. Alex Tosi is at first base. David Rackley at second. Chris Conroy down at third. Eighty one degrees our game time temperature not a cloud in sight. And Tristan McKenzie getting the opportunity of a lifetime here tonight something he's waited a long time for. Drafted a year ahead of the. Gold rush class that featured Shane Bieber Aaron Savali and Zach Plesek. But he was plucked right out of high school. And as you detailed Rick the, the injuries a season ago slowed him down. Yeah. You know that would be the only thing the competition you know you haven't been in that in a long time as that would Andre say 700 days plus so. It'll be nice to get back to work and once throw that first pitch strike and this guy may be ready to go for that first fastball as a leadoff hitter. I know if I was leading off I'd be looking first pitch fastball. McKenzie's wide and his first pitch in the big leagues a is a fastball strike. Now throw that ball out for a souvenir keep that in his locker. Now the 0 one. That was ball down and away. It's 0 and 2. Now the game's begun for him. I think all those uh, butterflies are gone. And a foul back. I like those last two pitches. The one had a little movement going down in the way for strike two, and then he came back inside with one. I'm sure the other pitchers on this ball club have told them hey you've got Roberto behind the plate don't worry about it don't shake him off when he puts the, a sign down go with it and have conviction with it. Weekly tap to second base Cesar Hernandez Changeout. will throw out Reyes one down. The storyline tonight brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Welcome to the no show. <laughs> well, the no show is no fans in the stands. But welcome to the show. And unfortunately, no fans there, but your teammates are watching and a lot of people around the, the country watching you make this start. Willie Castro getting after that first pitch fouled it back. McKenzie was a big prospect in high school at Palm Beach Royal Palm Beach High School down in Florida. Change up nice. He, he looks uh, nice and smooth. Go ahead Matt. I'm sorry. He had committed to Vanderbilt on a scholarship and then the Indians took him with their competitive balance pick at the end of the first round. And they were able to get him to sign and start his professional career as fastball fouled out of play. How's this for nerves? Eight pitches, eight strikes. I see the hook here. Right back to him. And McKenzie with the underhand flip. Two down. 
You know, sometimes you look at the media guide or wherever you see players listed, you might do it online. And sometimes you're saying, ah, those numbers are fudged a little bit. They made him a little taller, a little heavier. Right. 6'5", 165 pounds is just about right on for Tristan McKenzie. Well, just from the looks of it, it might be a little bit lighter. <laughs> <laughs> he might be the only guy that's lighter than what he says. But uh, so far, a couple of really nice change-ups, and that's a pitch he's, uh, he has had to, de to develop. And you know, when you're a young pitcher and you're getting your chance at the big leagues, it's the secondary pitches that come into play a lot more than in the minor leagues. Now he's facing a man with more than 1,700 career runs batted in. Challenged him with a first pitch fastball, and Cabrera followed it back. Threw the next one right by him. Focus and poise. I mean, hot knife through butter. Tristan McKenzie's first inning in the big leagues. Something special. They go one, two, three. The Indians are coming to bat. Matthew Boyd on the mound for the Tigers, the Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher, and uh, Boyd off to a slow start. 0 and 3, giving up eight home runs this year, um, a, a 964 ERA, and in 10 starts against the Indians, he's 2 and 4 with a 379. Acting manager Sandy Alomar will run this lineup out there tonight for the Indians, brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Cesar Hernandez leads it off. Jose Ramirez. In the two hole, Francisco Lindor batting third. Carlos Santana, Fran Mil Reyes, and Jordan Luplo getting the start. Domingo Santana, Roberto Perez, and the line of the Shields. And Matthew Boyd with a first pitch strike to Cesar Hernandez, who was two for four with the double last night. Bounce to short. Castro throws him out one away. Let's check out the Tigers defense. In the outfield, Stewart is in left field, Jones in center, Reyes over and right, and on the infield, Paredes is at third, Castro at short, Scope is at second, Candelario first, and Romine is doing the catching. Boyd has been working on the, in the side sessions on it command and, and getting his rhythm is uh, you know fundamentals trying to get everything in sync. Ground ball is short another throw this one pulled him off the bag but Candelario came down with the tag two down. Exact same spot as Hernandez hit it. it. Didn't look like it was that far off, did it? They had to jump and come off the base. And you got to make sure you catch it, though. Well, and he's still learning first base. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You know, a first baseman uh, didn't look like it was that far off. But if you don't know where you're at, you got to come off and get it and tag the guy, which he did. Francisco Lindor. Taking a strike. Two for five last night. Oh. Little slider boy with the fastball slider, also a changeup. And I mentioned he's given up eight home runs. Eight, uh, four have come on fastballs and four have come on changeups, and it's all about his location. In the dirt, so that's going to give Lindor a new life. Chasing that ball outside. Now watch, he gets a piece of it, but it hits the ground before it goes into the glove of Romine, so it's a foul ball. Yanks this one to left, down the line, fair ball in the corner. And Lindor's going to have to hurry. 
Here's the throw and he'll get in there safely with a two out double. Well there's a break for you. You fall that ball off and even though he catches it it hit the dirt and then the next pitch you hit one down the line. I'm thinking the way he's going. Watch it go foul. It was inside but it stayed fair. Just it looked like it hit chalk. Got a piece of chalk right there. That has been the real problem for Matthew Boyd out of 108 qualified starting pitchers this year. He ranks 108 in allowing the highest slugging percentage 676. So in 102 at bats he's given up 69 total bases. Sounds like he's getting too much of the plate and that's why he's working on that command and trying to stay out on the edges. did change up going down and away there it is a circle change very good look at it right there you don't see that happen much where he goes after a pitch out of the strike zone both pitchers firing strikes Boyd nine out of ten. In the dirt gets away Lindor will go down to third. There's that back foot slider and that uh, that's a tough pitch for any catcher to try and handle. You had a tough time picking it up you lose it in the hitter when you're trying to slide over there so a wild pitch that's the third for Boyd this year. Got him once with he's not fishing that time. And a high fastball can't entice him full count. This is another good two strike pitch. A lot of hitters will chase that Santana did not. Just another full count for Carlos Santana. Santana hasn't walked in the last five games. And a foul back. Ooh, that backswing got him. Looked like Santana brought the hand off the bat. That, we see that happen uh, a lot. I wonder if we got him right in the helmet. Watch the hand come off. There it comes, the right hand, and that back right on the top of the helmet conked him in the head. Remember when catchers used to wear the caps, just regular hats on that mask quite a few years ago. But boy, the helmets now, they have to. We see this happen a lot. Was that in back. black and white, Arch? Uh, no, this, this that was still was, in color, this, my friend. This moment's brought to you by <laughs> Arch. And <laughs> that was still in I color. I actually remember it. I'm just messing with you. No, they had the hats turned backwards and put the mask on and come down, but you didn't see the follows through like you do with the hitters nowadays. And a foul back our way. Oh man. Hey, I didn't even see it. Hey, gold glove, come on. I didn't see it. <laughs> come on. He totally just got out of the way. 
you got to catch that, man. He just went like this. Yeah, uh, yeah. show it, Matt. Yes. Uh, I'll pick it up and show it to everybody. Hey, <laughs> what's our motto? <laughs> pick Let it, it up when it starts rolling. <laughs> Stay off the injured list. Santana trying to get one between the third baseman and the shortstop, but Paredes makes the play to retire the side. No runs to hit, one left, no score after one. Andre, get a good look. Oh, you know I'm ready. So there's a foul ball. Matt's doing play by play, telling everybody, oh, the ball's coming up next to us. And look at the guy that was <laughs> the guy, look, for those that are too young, that guy on the left <laughs> has a gold glove in center field. He he was one of the best center fielders defensively ever. You can't catch what you don't see. Bingo, right? <laughs> okay, okay. I brag about you By all the, the time way, that the ball's already given away, Andre. <laughs> who, who, who do you think? Oh, it's Tommy. going down to Struthers. Tommy. <laughs> He's going to go out and try and get some more pretzels with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Arch. We got to put you in a bubble up there. <laughs> I'm already in a bubble. <laughs> Jonathan Scope leading off, and the fastball is in off the plate. This guy's locked in. First four hit game with the Tigers came last night. And in his last 10 games, Scope is batting 368. Yeah, he had a good day. He, you could tell from his first at bat, he was seeing the ball very well. Took a fastball base hit the other way, hit a curveball deep onto the home run porch. And he just continued after that. He's been around very good in Baltimore and went to Minnesota. And Detroit signed him. Well, Tristan McKenzie, you, you see what the scouts have talked about, the live arm. It's not just the, what the radar gun tells you. It, it just jumps on that hitter. You can tell yeah. it gets on you in a hurry. That looked like a little two seamer there. You see, he was holding it with the seams, not the four seam fastball. So hopefully, he had a little uh, run to it. But he comes at you, and it, it may take these guys that first time through to see. He's he looks like he's pretty conventional, coming straight over the top. But he may have a little extra on it. But boy, you love it. He's going out there and pounding the strike zone. 16 strikes out of 20 pitches. Pretty good curveball. I didn't get the call there. Two and one. It's okay, you keep it right there on that location. The first one he bounced in the first inning. He's got the release point for that now. That had good bite to it. Change up. Roberto working him very well. And let's take take a look. There you see it's almost like a three finger change up. Yeah. You know where the first and third finger on the outside, that middle finger just with the same arm speed. Cesar Hernandez stays with the big hop, throws it up, two down. Tonight's stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Shane Beaver made his debut May 31st, 2018, went five and two thirds at Minnesota against the Twins. Did not figure in the decision, he allowed four runs. Zach Plesak, a year later, made his debut. In Boston on a dreary, yeah, drizzly rain. night at Fenway. Exactly, I remember that one. Aaron Savali's debut was a little less than a month after police acts a year ago, and he was dynamite. Well, Matt, how much do you think that helps Tristan to be able to have those guys that he can go to? I know he went, I told you guys in the open, he and Bieber have talked all week about this. 
Well, just to have those type of guys to talk to. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about in terms of how the Indians player development yes. staff has ready these players and as Rick said when you walk into a clubhouse and you have three or four guys that you played with in the minor leagues yes. you feel a lot more welcome and comfortable and settling in. Yeah you can go in there and hang out with those guys and they'll and just follow them around and they'll teach you the ropes. It's nice. And I'm not putting anyone else down but I can tell you out of every player I've talked to and I've got something I want you to see but I'm not going to say it on the air yet. The players were excited for Tristan to have this moment. Every guy I talked to said, man, we can't wait. We want people to see what he can do. Just missed a little low. Jacoby Jones drawing a two out walk. First issued by McKenzie, and that was not an issue for him. He's not one of those guys that, well, he's got some command issues. 329 minor league innings. Only 98 walks against 394 strikeouts. Well, I'll give you something off of that, Matt, since 2015 Indians minor league pitchers with at least 275 innings pitched Shane Bieber has a 2.24 ERA the number two guy was Tristan McKenzie with 2.68 yeah. ERA. that's been your two best in the minors since 15 it, and it is interesting how you know the narrative is constantly in flux when you're talking about player development and a guy can be on the fast track one year and then forgotten left behind the next and it's not that anybody forgot about Tristan McKenzie. It's just that you know he was a young player taken out of high school and so his development trajectory is going to be a little bit different than guys who are a little bit older. Yeah. Lisak Bieber pitched in college. It's a big leap coming out of high school going to professional baseball than it is coming out of college. Yes. I mean. Yeah. It, you would it, think. It, it's a big big change you would think though if, if he were healthy last year we may have seen him before we saw some of the other guys I could believe that the one one in on his hands fouled back to just tell me when they're coming my way I'm checking everything. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to protect him well Come I'm on. not watching I'm, I'm watching a bunch of different things here right now I want to see well, normally I could dive I over could. there and help you out but we have the yeah. plexiglass we've got the penalty box this uh, year boy that's been uh, so fitting it's been great <laughs> <laughs> so fitting that may stay up after this whole I, uh, I, I, I bet it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> runner goes pitches up high Roberto Stroh is in time and they got him oh you can't throw it any better than Roberto Perez right on the money Watch Lindor just catch the ball, and the tag is right there. Good night, Jacoby Jones. No score. Home half of the second inning. Brand Merrill Reyes hit it to the plate, and our Kia give it everything. Displays a 400 batting average for Fran Meal against the Tigers. How about that? Six hits, four dingers. The fourth came last night. And in the third inning it gave the Indians a five to nothing lead which up until that moment was insurmountable for opposing teams against the tribe this year. But last night all that changed. Tiger snapped a 20 game personal losing streak to the tribe. You know and you, a lot of people don't realize how difficult that is. You can't beat the same team 20 times <laughs> you in just, a row. I yeah. mean that's the second longest in the history. I mean it's so tough to do. You know you figure somebody and how you stop losing streaks is your pitcher either throws a shutout and is just so awesome or yeah, get a boatload of runs and that's exactly what they did. Oh they had 10 unanswered last night. Ron Garden hires club getting the proverbial monkey off their back. Almost hit him. This was our great clip of the game last night. The good times were rolling at this moment. He was in the dugout doing the shake and shimmy afterwards. Yeah. 
but that's where it all stopped too. It ended quickly. And down goes Fran Mill. So first strikeout for Matthew Boyd, one down here in the second. The crazy thing about that, Rick, is that even with last night, where the Tigers had the seven run fourth inning, in the first four innings of their games this year, Detroit has been outscored by 35 runs. Right. So getting behind early has, Put on most nights, spelled disaster for the Tigers. It's not easy to come from behind. You know, you, you can't be on point every game and, and, and keep coming back and coming back. And that's the total opposite for the Indians. What I mean. They score in the first four or five innings, and then after that, they're shut down. When Detroit came back and punched them in the mouth yesterday with the seven runs, it looked like they just gave up. They didn't have anything left. They Drop quit. It. Dropping and able to get there is Reyes. Two away. He was in full sprint and then kind of pulled up quickly. Yeah, the Indians, by contrast, in the first four innings, are plus 19 in run differential. We won't talk about from the sixth inning. Of the well, game. why not? You gotta, you gotta talk about it. Well, it's actually, it's actually flipped quite a bit since the early part of the season. And part of that was because they had a couple of games where they had big innings. They had a 10 run inning and a, I think a seven run. Yeah. Swing and a miss down goes Domingo. So Matthew Boyd sharp here at the outset. Two scoreless in Cleveland. Welcome back to Progressive Field, top of the third. Indians taking on the Tigers. Tristan McKenzie on the mound for the Indians. Arch, this is that picture's probably getting ready to go on Instagram. I know you're not on there. You want to know who that is up there watching? Who, who Tristan? is that? That is Nolan Jones. Is that right? The one of the top prospects for the Indians. He wanted to come in and see his buddy get his first start. So the best way he could do it is come over here. He's over not the allowed garage. in the ballpark, huh? No, well, he's over at the other site. And I know Tristan has made his way over here a few times to watch games as well, but. They've got to stay away, and there's only certain ways that they can come in the park in certain times. I got you. So since Nolan couldn't come in and watch his buddy, good for him. Is the parking garage tier seven? I, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, tier ten. Ten. Yeah, tier eighty-five. Nolan is, Jones was part of that uh, great 2016 draft with Bieber and the likes. He was the second-round pick of the Indians in that 16 draft, and I, I would imagine that. Uh, even though he had just gotten a double A a year ago, he's going to be going to spring training next year mm -hmm. looking to make some noise. I think he opened some eyes during summer camp. Yeah. 2.0. Well, we right? watched him hit a yeah, home, hit home run, run to left center field one time. Big kid with a nice long swing. Yeah, I heard good things about him. But yeah, he was, you know, Tristan's family couldn't be here, but the guys that are around here that have come up with him wanted to be here. And That's support nice. Him. That can't be the greatest view over there either. He's no. kind of got a sliver of the field. Well, Matt, right down these there. guys are younger. They have good eyes, yeah, not they, like ours. Yeah. <laughs> like yours. <laughs> no, I can see. I wasn't looking at the ball. Wait, did he get mad last night when Matt goes, oh, Gardy's a little older than me. You're a little older no, than me. <laughs> no, a little, yeah, a little younger than Arch. Yeah, a little younger than Arch, a little older than me. Uh, and to talk about the confidence of McKenzie, before the first pitch, he was kind of on top of the mound, dancing a little bit to the music. but. Back in 16, when the Indians were in the World Series, before game one, I was getting on the elevator to come down, Matt. You know how we would do pregame on the, on the field and mm -hmm. go up and get something to eat, and I'm coming back down. And I'm in the elevator with a bunch of taller guys. And there's a skinny kid that's in the back that looks at me as the doors open, and I get ready to walk out, and he goes, Hey, Mr. Knott, do you know who I am? 
Mr. Nine. And I chuckled oh, yeah. at that. First of all, that didn't like. I go, don't call me Mr. <laughs> Nine. Yeah. And right. I go, I go, you're Tristan McKenzie. You were the pick last year. We met in Tampa Bay. And he goes, you really remembered who I was? I go, it's my job. Now hurry up and get up here. A couple days ago, when he finally called up, he sent a message to me. He says, I'm coming. The moral of the story is anytime you get in an elevator, everybody's taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> Swung on and miss. He struck him out. Uh, oh my third Turbo strikeout <laughs> for McKenzie, and there are two down in the inning. Touche. <laughs> there you go. The high heater above the belt. Great pitch. Just can't catch up to it. It'll be out number two. We're going to talk with Shane Bieber coming up. In the bottom of the third inning, when the Indians come to bat, talk about his start to the year and talk about Tristan McKenzie making his debut here tonight. And so far, so good. Cesar, or excuse me, uh, Isaac Paredes hit the grand slam last night. In his, his first career home run was a salami, and that was the Proverbial nail in the coffin for the Indians. They never recovered. That's true. It made it a seven nothing ball game after that swing, or seven five. Excuse me. by the command by McKenzie so far that first time through the lineup not only just with the fastball but he's thrown some change ups he's mixed in a slider his curveball he's thrown everything he has so you know to Andre's point you know he was bebopping around in the music watching him just walk out uh, to the bullpen he was lip syncing to an old Motown tune so he knows his music too. <laughs> Strike three oh, with a fastball was, at 97 miles an hour. That was nasty. First time through the order, McKenzie strikes out four, walks one. Here at Progressive Field, where the Indians and the Tigers are scoreless, going to the bottom of the third. Roberto Perez getting ready to lead it off. And Matthew Boyd's first pitch up and away, ball one. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning, Andre Knott, and we're happy to be joined now by Indians pitcher Shane Bieber. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm well. How about you? Well, we're doing great. It's been a lot of fun watching you pitch. We'll get to that in a second, but let's start with what you've watched uh, from your guy, Tristan McKenzie. You guys had a couple of years together in the minor leagues, or at least crossed paths a few times. What to, what have you seen so far? What has impressed you the most? What's impressed me the most is he's just being himself. Um, that's kind of. I saw him yesterday. Got to see him up here for the first time, and, and got to talk to him a little bit. Um, he was telling me, obviously. You know, it's a, a crazy experience getting called up for the first time, and uh, you know a lot was going through his head. And um, me and Savali and a couple other guys just kind of reinforced that that thought: just be yourself. Uh, you know, Tristan McKenzie is more than enough, so that's what he's doing tonight, and that's shown. Perez goes down, swinging one away. That's going to bring up Delano to Shields. Shane, that seems like such an easy thing to say. But is there things that you had to do in your debut and are things that maybe you had to do to even now to settle in and just be yourself and not let the, the place overwhelm you. Yeah it, uh, it, it you're exactly right. It's a lot easier said than done. Um, that's what's so impressive about what he's doing right now. He's not doesn't seem like anything's getting to him. Uh, he's gotten off to a tremendous start. 
and uh, he's he's pitching to his strengths. And I think having a guy like Roberto behind the dish, uh, you know, can help that much more. Um, he controls the game as long as you trust him, which Tristan obviously does and, and is doing a, a great job of. Uh, good things will happen for you, but um, I, I think that's what it comes down to. He's obviously got tremendous stuff. Uh, we're seeing it, you know, in live action right now, and uh, you know it's going to be fun to fun to watch for a long time. The line under Shields fouls went back our way. Look at Matt. Hey, hey, oh, I was, look at Matt. You ain't moving, ready. Rick. I saw yeah, you. Yeah, good jump. <laughs> You're in the box. Die for it. Rick's going to say false hustle. That's what I'm ready for him to say. <laughs> no, I watch. no, I want you to die for it. See ya. <laughs> you would have landed right on me. Yo, <laughs> you right yeah. You're right below us, huh? Hell yeah. So, Beebs, your next start will be the 30th game of the year for the Indians. And, and I think we all know half a season, there are no awards for that. But at, as you approach this start, you're right now leading the league in ERA wins, strikeouts, innings pitched. Any one of those statistical categories hold any more significance for you in terms of what you set out to do? Uh, for me, I'll wait for this play to be over. Close play, but just Shields is out number two. Good 90. Um, but for me, I think the thing that holds the most weight, at least in my mind, is innings pitched. I think if if you can be up towards the top of the leaderboard in innings pitched, you'll give yourself a chance to, to lead in a lot of other statistical categories. So um, I, I think what it comes down to is every fifth day going out there, giving your team the best chance to win and, and eating up innings, and good things will happen for you. That's kind of the way I've always approached it, and uh, that's the way the season started for me this year. Beams, can I ask you about the cutter? I know we asked so much about <laughs> hey man, we're looking at you smiling. Yeah. The change up was the pitch that we kept asking you about last year, but what has the cutter meant to you this year and, and how has it helped you kind of progress? Yeah, I mainly developed it so you guys would stop asking me about the change up. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Shane and I usually talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that was something that I've played with the last couple of years. Um, started like two off seasons ago and it was kind of hit or miss. It was good at times, bad at times. and kind of developed some consistency with it over spring training this year and then over quarantine obviously had plenty of time to develop that but that's kind of a in my mind starting throwing that pitch I wanted something to get guys off my fastball something to kind of bury into lefties that I could throw for strikes because uh, a curveball and a slider into lefties are generally below the zone so if they lay off that it's usually taken for a ball so something I can kind of locate for strikes that can also bear in on guys hands and uh, you know I'm still learning how to use it most effectively but it's definitely been a big pitch for me to, to begin this year. Three one offering to Hernandez. And that's going to go foul full count. Shane anybody teach you how to throw the slider was it Savali. Yeah, Savali, uh, Josh Tomlin, Corey Kluber. We've, there's a so lot you've of good cutters. To them all, a lot right? of good cutters in front of me. So uh, you know, Plutko's got a great cutter as well. Um, you have to find the what fits your hand the best. Yeah, yeah. So there's different grips. It's it's more about the way you throw the pitch. Um, but you know, it's different for everybody. I think everybody has different thought processes with the with the cutter and the grip and the way it's coming out of their hand. But I finally found one that worked for me. And um, you know, kind of developed some consistency with it, like I said, and um, it's been working out. Shane, with all the strikeouts that you've been able to put together, have you noticed online they've got this little rip there? Have you noticed that they've come up with the Shane Bieber strikeout strut that they've been talking about? Have you have you noticed this or no, seen this yet? No, I haven't. I haven't so you're not doing it. it on purpose. Is all I'm, I want people to know. It's I just, mean, you, you go back to 2018. I was probably doing the same thing. <laughs> it's just the LA cool in you yeah. there. All right. Oh uh, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> Cesar Hernandez with a two out base hit second hit of the night for Cleveland and it's going to give Jose Ramirez a chance to bat. Shane when you talk about your cutter uh, I'll bring this up because we were just facing somebody the other night and I forget who it was but he said for him the cutter is a grip it and rip it pitch so he was meaning I want velocity with a little movement. Mm -hmm. Is that the way you approach it or are you looking for command with movement. Um, I'd say ideally you want all three. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I absolutely understand what he's saying in, in, as grip it and rip it because you need it to look like a fastball for as long as possible and just a little bit of a difference. So my cutter's been around uh, 88.9 is I think what the average was or up to this for this year, um, which is about four to five off my fastball, which is kind of right where I want it. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm gripping it and ripping it. I'm throwing that thing as hard as I can just to kind of make it look like a fastball out of the hand for as long as possible with a little bit 
uh, little difference and subtleties that are, um, you know, playing off of that fastball. But uh, I think that's most ideal, and especially if you can command it, that'll get you a long way. Hernandez at first with two down. Jose Ramirez, boy, he's been in a funk. 0 for his last 20, trying to break loose here. Shane, you guys bring up Roberto and, and just the job that he does. And Sandy Alomar went out of his way yesterday to even say that Roberto is the captain of the ship. That it kind of runs through him. As a pitcher, can you explain to us how it makes you feel when you know that you have him behind the plate working with you, especially when you're someone like a Tristan situation tonight? Yeah, um, it's it's comforting. It's you know he's a special special guy, special player. You know, we obviously saw how big of a difference he can make last year and at the beginning of this year. And his feel for the game, the game of baseball, especially where he's at behind the dish, um, is incredible. I've never seen somebody with the type of feel for, for pitching that he does, that he possesses. And uh, he's an easy guy to trust, obviously, not only uh, pitch calling, but working behind the plate and, and bouncing curveballs and all that. So, like we said, Tristan's doing a phenomenal job of, of pitching his game and trusting Roberto. And, they're doing just fine right now. Shay, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Best of luck as you yeah. go through the rest of the year. Thanks, guys. Be well. Introducing Quick Pick, MLB Rally's new game that offers fans the opportunity to pick outcomes and compete for cash prizes. Make your predictions count. Play Quick Pick, no purchase is necessary, and you must be 21 or older to compete. Restrictions may apply. Victor Reyes leading off here in the fourth. Tristan McKenzie has faced the minimum through the first three innings. Only man to reach was Jacoby Jones who walked. He was thrown out trying to steal. And a fastball misses low. Once again, you get a look at his changeup and coming out of the grip. Hitter chases it, ball in the dirt. He's had two strikes on nine of their hitters. Softly lined to center and a good jump by DeShields enables him to make the catch. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Steven oh boy, Strasburg oh out for the season. That guy, what a, he's a good pitcher when healthy. Guess I don't know a lot about carpal tunnel surgery. I only heard of that. It was people that worked on computers all day. Used to, yeah. Maybe that's what he's doing the other four days. He's not pitching. <laughs> Willie Castro Blasto. That is long gone. Deep, and I mean really deep. Into the lower deck in right field, and the Tigers strike first on Willie Castro's second home run of the year. Now, the former Indians farmhand yeah, that, getting yeah. his uh, current club on the board. He's going to throw a changeup, but this is inside, and it's up. There you go. He stayed back on it. I mean, he hit it a ton. That went, uh, I think that got over all the seats out there oh, in yeah. right field. It was coming near that second tank. That was it a ton, man. So Detroit will take a 1 0 lead. Miguel Cabrera cannot catch up to the heat.
blew it right by him for the second time tonight. He strikes out Miguel Cabrera. Five K's for McKenzie. But doesn't it figure the one guy in that Tiger lineup that probably knows you better than anybody else because he played with you in the minor leagues is the guy that yaks you for you. Isn't that how it goes? Somebody that knows you where he, he will have the upper hand or bragging rights. That's all right. One pitch, he hit it out. Could have easily popped it up. Jonathan Scope takes the curveball for a strike. I'll tell you, both these pitchers today get the ball, they stay on the rubber, and let's go. And they're throwing strikes. Hitters are ready, defense is ready. Delano makes the grab. The side is retired. But the first hit allowed by Tristan McKenzie in the big leagues comes in the fourth inning of his first big league start. But it's a home run, and the Tigers lead it one to nothing. Do up for Cleveland here in the home half of the fourth. And that's popped out of play to the right. Frankie with a double down the left field line into the corner in the first inning. It came with two outs. He got to third on a wild pitch. But then Carlos Santana grounded out to end the inning. That was the pitch that he got him to swing and miss at before, but he fouled it off and it went into the ground before he hit his double. I bet he won't come back inside again. But Boyd has been throwing strikes. Hasn't walked anybody. Four strikeouts. Yeah, there it was. Change up down and away. And Frankie beats it out. That was like a bug on the rug, and once it got by Boyd. By the time Castro got to it, he had no chance to throw out Lindor. Yeah, he had to reach for it, so it took the sting out of the bat. And boy, you got to get to it. Frankie was out of the box in a hurry. He hustles down the line and gets himself an infield hit. He knew it was going to be close, but he beat it out. Carlos Santana. So first time up Santana as I said grounded out to end the inning it came on a 3 2 pitch. So far this year now 27 percent of his plate appearances have resulted in a 3 2 full, count. Yeah, full count. Well it seems like yeah there's at least one a day. That he's going to go full. He doesn't swing early. He's been some kind of durable. You know he will keep the the base runners honest, and I know that's probably called from the dugout. But when Boyd goes on, he's got that slide step. He's so quick to the plate, you're not going to run on him anyway. He's making a conscious effort to throw over and keep the base runners honest. The the, the few that they've had. Play. And 
and Santana stays alive. There's a pop. Left field. Kristen Stewart. One down. T Mobile ticket to the game where the White Sox have been bashing the ball lately. Hit six home runs <laughs> against the Cubs last night, averaging better than 400 feet per dinger. 21 homers in their last six games. Hey, Matt, that was that against was Lester. Against, I was just yes. going to say, that was against John Lester that they, they smoked. If you watched our broadcast and you've heard, you've heard Arch talk about it against certain pitchers, you want to get on top of the plate and get jammed. I told you this earlier, Arch, as I was watching that game last night a little bit down here. That's what they did the second time through against Lester. They got on top of the plate and just started bashing him. Well, forcing him to try and throw that cutter in, and if it's if it's for a ball, then they take it. But if he misses, they're ready for it. Matt, when that team gets hot swinging it, I keep selling everything. They're like a softball team at times. Yeah. And as we know, in Chicago, you can get. When the weather conditions right. right, it's warm. That ball will fly yes. in that ballpark. Well, they were at Wrigley last night, but yeah, either way, it flies in Chicago at both of those parks when it gets warm. Well, they have 49 home runs as a team. And that's the best in the American League. Wow. Yeah, it was last Sunday they hit four consecutive home runs. And right. It was against St. Louis. That's right. Yeah, when those guys get on a roll, they can. Uh, you better be on top of your game pitching to them. It's almost like they've taken a little bit of what Minnesota did last year, and even done yeah. it a little bit harder. You know, like they've gone. Anderson's leading off swing, and he's not the. Prototypical leadoff hitter, and they just every guy goes up there swinging hard. Jam Reyes, jam shot to they shallow fall in. center. They Nobody's fall gonna in. get there, and it's gonna be a base hit for Fran Meal. Yeah, he got inside, and uh, Jones was playing him very deep in center field out there, and he couldn't get to it. But I mean, it didn't hit that far. Second baseman couldn't get there. We'll take a look and see where he's playing, but you can see it got down around the trademark of the bat. Look at he's out there. Let's see if it, what kind of jump he gets. I don't think he could have got there even if he had a good jump. No, that's just a base hit because he jammed it, made a good pitch. Jones is a pretty aggressive center fielder, but that's a guy. If anything, you're going to play a few steps back when sure, he comes up. Absolutely, yeah, no doubt. Especially after the four home runs he's hit against yeah, him right. in the last two weekends. Yeah, you play deep. Now Jordan Luplo fly to right is only time up. It's funny you bring that up about Jones. I read a quote last Sunday when we were leaving Detroit, that he, or when the team was leaving Detroit. He said, I don't even know why we keep pitching that race guy. He only just hits it over my head the whole time. We got to stop pitching to him. Tell him to go buy a ticket in the seats. He <laughs> might be able to catch one. He had to get in the bushes in Detroit last <laughs> yeah. week to catch those. Yeah, that's a long way away. He needed a cherry picker. Get up high in the second level of that ivy. I'll get into one of those cars they parked up there, and he might have had a chance. Call him the center field valet. <laughs> Low breaking ball and that's in for a strike one and two the count Boy Boyd complete completely different guy than the one we saw last weekend in Detroit.
or I should say from what we've seen in the past. This pitch just in off the plate. They wanted it up a little bit, but it's still a good pitch with two strikes. You know, that hitter looking away, you figure. So you go in, he could go with another breaking ball or a change up down in the way or breaking ball inside. Last year, the Indians scored 11 runs in 18 innings against Boyd. And his ERA coming into today was 964. But the only major hit was the two out double by Lindor in the first. Strikes out Luke Blow is fourth strikeout of the night, fifth strikeout of the night. Well, he, he, he didn't give in. He threw the change up down and away, and he got him to chase it. I think the best pitch in that at bat that Luke Lowe had was the first fastball that he took. Domingo Santana struck out his first time up. And was way out in front of that changeup by Boyd. First pitch, this head bat. Hard hit ball to third. Paredes goes to second, inning, ending fifth. Four in the books. Detroit one, Cleveland nothing. Cleveland Indians baseball brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Visit Kia.com to see what it means to give it everything. By the injury liars at Elk and Elk, proud partners of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. And by Chevy, get behind the wheel of a new Chevrolet and find new roads again. one nothing Tigers as we go to the fifth and Tristan McKenzie in his major league debut. Has thrown 67% of his pitches for strikes. And this will be his 58th pitch of the night coming up here. Jamer Candelaria with a drive to deep left field. It is up and off the wall. And by the time Luke Flo picks it up, it's a double for Candelario. So yeah. both hits allowed by McKenzie tonight, a one a homer and now a double. Well, stay down the baseball and he goes the other way. There you see that fastball. And it was away. He stayed on it nicely, put a good swing on it, and took it off the auxiliary scoreboard out there. He will get his fifth double of the year. So there's a start to the fifth inning for Detroit. Now Jacoby Jones, he drew a walk, the only walk issued by McKenzie. Where the bunt took the strike. <laughs> and now it's zero and two. To work on him. Nice Ate him up job. with a fastball. That's his sixth strikeout of the night. Just watch him uh, elevate this and move in. It looked like a little two seam 94 mile an hour. And it ties him up. He really had no chance there. He worked him over quickly. 
did not let him advance the runner. A nice job. Christian Stewart grounded out his only time up. Good curveball. I mean, he's done three quality pitches here tonight. The fastball, electric at times, very good changeup with good movement, and then that curveball. And he's mixed in a couple sliders, but that's a pitch he's been working on. So, you know, three are good, good enough. But he's throwing strikes with all of them, too. That's what you like about it. Takes a fastball, strike three called. Seven for Tristan McKenzie. Spectrum Mobile replay. There's your slider right there. Then he comes back with the curveball. Now change up. All right. Now let's go to the strength. Let's go to the heater. A little two seam fastball, elevated fastball, down and away paint at 97. Elevated fastball. So well, this guy is. Uh, He's been a treat to watch. Two down for Austin Romine. And he takes a fastball for strike one. Detroit, they've done a nice job hitting with runners in scoring position coming into the night against the Indians. They were hitting at 367. By him upstairs, it's 0 and 2. Tristan McKenzie in his major league debut here tonight. The former sandwich short competitive balance pick by the Indians back in 2015, late first round. Low and away. Tristan. Said he learned the game of baseball from his dad. Said he did everything for him as a youngster. And he said he loved the game and he would do anything to learn and study the game. Watch it on TV nonstop, try to learn tips from the pro guys and just so he could pass something along to young Tristan. And the one, two. Oh, Swung nice. on and missed foul tipped into the mitt of Roberto Perez. Eight strikeouts for McKenzie. Gives up the leadoff double here in the fifth and then strikes out three in a row. Well, visit your My Indians ticket account today to review your 21 renewal information. Secure the lowest possible price and more. Deadline to renew your account for next season is Friday, August 28th. Call 216 420 hits Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m.
Roberto Perez struck out his only time up in the third and will lead off the fifth. The Indians have been held to four hits. Three of them singles. And the double by Francisco Lindor that was back in the first two. Forty-eight out of seventy for strikes for Matthew Boyd. Well, I'll say this: Barksdale asked in a hurry. He didn't hesitate. He sees that ball go in the dirt. He wasn't sure, so he jumps right up and asks the first base umpire. Oh, Roberto's back to even at two and two. He walked twice last night and had a base hit. But he's down swinging for the second time tonight as Matthew Boyd is now fan six Indians hitters. Comes a change up here. He tried to get him before with that. That one had uh, more of the plate. Gets him to swing and miss for the second time tonight. Ground out his only time up tonight. Shallow right. Victor Reyes has that. Two down. Well, Matthew Boyd has been dealing tonight, just changing speeds, moving it around, and has six strikeouts. A little breaking ball away. He'll throw that fastball inside and not afraid to use that change up away. Uh, so he's just mixed his pitches well, kept him down in the zone, works quickly. He hasn't walked anybody. But for whatever reason, even though he has 9-0-2-1-2 counts. Close play, but Scope able to throw him out. The Indians go 1-2-3. After five, it's 1-0 Detroit. Back here at Progressive Field as we go into the top of the sixth inning as Tristan McKenzie's making his major league debut. Some have asked and some may see the SSA on the side of his hat. He had a female cousin that passed away suddenly back in high school. So he's been doing that since high school for a cousin that passed away when he was younger and he always wanted to do it here on the major league level. So he's been able to do that as well. He's been dynamite here in his major league debut. He has struck out eight Tigers batters, including the last three in a row. Isaac Paredes was no match for McKenzie back in the third inning. Greg Allen has taken over for Delano De Shields in center field. Paredes waves and an off speed pitch, so and two. It appeared that back in the fourth inning, uh, De Shields came up a little gimpy after making a running catch. Don't know if something happened on that particular play or maybe it's just something he's been dealing with. Swung out and missed. He <laughs> ate him up again. This kid is uh, uh, something else. That's four straight strikeouts. He has nine on the day. And he is not intimidated. He's gone out there and he's just been himself. Let's go back and look at uh, something that we we caught that. Delino, he just came Watch in. Watch him right there. Uh, yeah, he's wincing. 
I don't know what he did unless like you said something might have been bothering prior to that who knows could be but he got a good jump on that I remember Matt saying that but as soon as he took a kind of a false step after he kind of jumped and then you could tell as he caught it as we saw right there in the video I've been watching him since then so I kind of knew something was going on with that leg. You know Matt you were talking about just the size of Tristan McKenzie for the game Sandy Alomar was asked you know because of how skinny he is does he remind him of anyone I'm curious of what that is hit well back is Santana Domingo shy of the track makes the catch and there are two down curious what it's curious who you would compare him to size wise now Sandy Alomar said a young Pedro Martinez and oil can boy. Wow, there were, he was thin too. Yeah, he, not, was, he wasn't that thin. No, no, I don't think many have been. But I remember when Tristan was drafted. I remember asking who was a pitcher he looked up to, or who was someone that he wanted to emulate in his career. And he said Doc Gooden. And I remember I looked at him. I'm like, how do you know about Doc Gooden? And it goes back to the story you told, Matt. His dad. Said, my dad. Yeah. He goes, my dad said that he was a, a taller pitcher, used his legs to get power, <laughs> and that was one of the guys that his dad was showing video of when he was growing up. Was Doc Gooden. Well, just the frame, just the frame, not the way he pitches, and obviously one's left hand and one's right handed. But Chris Sale's the only other baseball player right. I've seen as a pitcher that's that thin and can throw with that kind of velocity. And you know, you guys know better than me that some have said if you don't have, you know, strong limbs or strong thighs, that it's it's hard to be a starting pitcher in baseball. Do you think the Chris Sales and guys like that have changed that arch? Maybe. Because well, wasn't that I, what you always were told or heard coming up? Well, that I mean, that's so that when they pitch on four-day rotations, yeah, big strong uh, legs and lower halves. The old drop and drive, Tom yes. Seaver style. But, yes. Yeah, that was that was back in the day. Yes. He's had what 11 0 2 1 2 counts. He's thrown strikes. He's he's been ahead of almost all hitters. Good night. I mean, not even fair. Double Ten digits. strikeouts in the major league debut of Tristan McKenzie. And now it's time for the Sugardale Hot Dog Derby. Now it looks like Tristan McKenzie's major league debut has come to an end. But wow, six dynamite innings for sure. Stats with lows. He's been popping them up with the best. Jose Ramirez has grounded out and struck out tonight. And now 0 for his last 21. You know, when I originally heard the stat, I kind of cringed, but then you see the other names up there, and all those guys seem to be home run guys that drive the ball. So, so I'm guessing that's guys that get under the ball a little bit. Another thing Sandy Alomar did mention before the game. Jose's been dealing with a thumb. It seems to be bothering him more when he's hitting left handed, but we know Jose, he wants to play. He doesn't want to sit out and wait. He wants to play through it. And the team feels like Jose dealing with this thumb is better now than having someone else play third base at this point in time. And he draws a walk, so he's at least on base here and now. For the second time tonight, the Indians have their leadoff man aboard against Matthew Boyd. First walk for Boyd, too, as well. So there's a start to your inning. See if you can get the kid a couple of runs and give him an opportunity to win his first uh, start. Come on, offense. Frankie Lindor has doubled and singled. Yeah, he's two for two. He beat out an infield hit that he topped to the shortstop last time up. Again, Boyd going to go to first base. He's done that a lot tonight every time he's had a runner there. Jose Ramirez is a perfect five for five stealing bases, so when he decides to go, there's usually not much of a contest.
in off the plate. One and one. In action in the Tiger pin. 84 pitches for Boyd so far. Well, I'm sure Gardy's pleased with him to this point. He's done a nice job. Other oh, way, that's going to drop beauty. for a base nice hit, and swing. Jose Ramirez will stop that second. So, Frankie, three for three. He went inside out. He looked very comfortable up there, not trying to do too much, and just takes the ball the other way. So, a very good start to the inning here for the Tribe. Watch how he waits back on this ball. Let's it track deep to him. It doesn't try to pull it and goes inside out and is rewarded. So Frankie three for three. Now Carlos Santana 0 for two. Well the table is set though. Santana only a career 246 hitter against the Tigers but 22 career home runs. Well, in his last start against the White Sox, Boyd was gone by the fourth inning. He used up 66 pitches in the first two. Now, that was against the White Sox, and as we said earlier, they've been swinging the bats really well. Well, when he pitched his last two starts against the White Sox, uh, they let off the game with home runs in the first inning both times. So he was playing from, uh, from the hole right from the get-go. And now, throw down the oh, first, but Lindor is back safely. They had a play set up. To your point, he's given up eight home runs, four of them in the first inning. Yeah. It looked like they were sneaking in. Look, they're coming in. This is a design play for Linder. They saw him getting off the bag. It just was it didn't Romance transpire did, early. Like he had a good grip initially and it had to take a little bit extra time before he let it go. But now a good spot for Santana, three and one. Right field. Boy, nothing you can do. Caught. Pretty good uh, at bat there. Nothing to show for. This is the first time Boyd has been into the sixth inning. And what happens? Here comes Gardy. He sees it. And on the flip side, as Sandy Alomar has said, you know, the Indians hitters have worked hard to get into good hitters' counts. And then there's a 3 1 changeup. And Santana pokes it to right field. But it stays up. Reyes makes the catch, and you've got one out. So Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made. Matthew Boyd goes five and a third here tonight, and we'll see if the Tigers bullpen can be as effective as they were last night when we come back. To you buy your local Toyota dealers. One run. Willie Castro, former minor league teammate of Tristan McKenzie, takes him deep in the fourth inning. And that's the only run of the game. And McKenzie only allowing two hits in his six innings of work, striking out 10, walking one batter. New pitcher for the Tigers is right hander John Schreiber's sidearm delivery guy. Well, Schreiber has appeared in 10 games, and he's retired the, the first batter he has faced all 10 times. But he allowed the first runs of his season uh, last Sunday against the Indians. Or well, maybe they're going to try and add on to him. Nice slider. 
because McKenzie he pitched too good. They got to get him a couple of runs here. Last night Michael Fulmer was out after three innings in the bullpen went six scoreless and they didn't give up many hits along the way. Slider going down and away, but it, it, that thing backed up and it came inside. It's the first time he's gone uh, into the sixth inning this year. Nice from 0 2 to 3 2. Didn't go fishing, stay, remain patient, make them throw you a strike here. Struck him out, two down. Man, I mean, it is, it just. Amazing how the theme just continues to play out time and time again. You work hard, you battle your way back into account, you get yourself into a good count. He made a good pitch right here on a full count, though. But nothing seems to work for the Indians hitters. Well, someone's got to come up with a hit. And I mean, that's the uh, the solution. Maybe jump them earlier in the count because yeah. getting deep in the counts hasn't paid off. Jordan Luplo did not go. He's 0 for 2. That time he looked like he was caught, caught in between. between. See why Gardner got Boyd out of there and brought in Schreiber to face the right handers Reyes and Luke Lowe because he he can be tough on the right handers with that slider. Get him to chase. He's been one of their more reliable relievers since uh, the September of last season. And he started at him and it comes on the inside corner. He didn't like the call, but it was a good pitch. Two on, two out. And another full count. He's thrown more balls and strikes. And the runners will be moving on this 3 2 pitch. Jose Ramirez, the tying run at second. Frankie Lindor, go ahead, run at first. He's got a huge lead. And that's ball four, and the bases are loaded. Domingo Santana coming to the plate. Domingo 0 for 2. Well, Domingo, all his hits have come against right-handers this year. He 
He's 0 for the 13 against lefty, so that was maybe a break for him getting the right hander out there, but it's going to come with two outs. And a first pitch strike over the outside corner, and you figure everything from Schreiber is going to be moving away from Santana. And just like that, it's 0 and 2. Well, now we'll see if Schreiber tries to expand the zone, get him to swing at his pitch. See if he takes him off the outside part of the plate and just mixes one in off the plate. He threw that one pitch to Luplo like that to get to strike two, but he figured he wasn't going to miss with it. Only the New York Mets have had more at bats with the bases loaded than the Cleveland Indians. This is their 34th at bat with the bases loaded. The Mets came into tonight with 36. And as a team, Cleveland a 242 batting average with the bases loaded. Off the plate. Two and two. So there's he's missed with other two. That's he let Luplo back in the at bat until he got to three two before he walks him. See if he does the same thing here to Santana. A line drive up the middle and into left center field. Ramirez ties the game. Lindor gives the Indians the lead. Here comes Luplo. Here's the throw to the plate. He is safe. It's a three run double with two outs here in the sixth for Domingo Santana. And the Indians have come back to take the lead. They finally get the big hit to break one open here tonight. And he got a four seam fastball. On the 2 2 count, he fouled off a slider the pitch before, and I mean, hits it on the middle part of the field, shoots it by Castro at short, and good hustle by Luplo here, not giving up. He was off on a dead sprint as soon as that ball was hit, and the hustle pays off, gets a hand in there at home plate, and a big two out double by Santana. Ron Gardenhire and the Tigers are going to challenge That's good. the play Let at up. the plate. I don't think they're going to win this, though. I don't either. It appears that Luplo gets there's the, the hand. hand on the yep. plate before the tag, but I agree. We'll wait and see if there's a different angle. Hey, this guy's been clutch uh, with two outs, and uh, he had a three-run double in Pittsburgh, if you remember. That's the game that Santana hit a three-run. The other Santana, Carlos, hit a three-run homer. A good hustle all the way around, and at least the kid's going to get a two runs if they overturn it. Three runs and a chance for more if it just stays the same. He got a four seam fastball there. It stayed on it. Very big hit. They, they were desperate for one of those. Boy, you're not kidding. Watch, here's the look right there. You see that he beats the throw. Now, that hand, if it's down on the plate, he's safe. Uh, that will be the question. But it looked like, and he was called safe. He beat the throw. And here comes the tag. I think the hand's on the plate. Well, like you said, Domingo Santana coming up with a big hit. We'll see. Is it three or two? He's safe. It's a three run double. And Jordan Luplo, give him credit. He was hustling all yeah, the way. Made right. it easy for third base coach Tony Mansolino to send him home. 
Yeah, that's a big run right there. Gives him a uh, watch. Thank you very much, boys. I needed those. He's safe. That's right. Safe all the way. Yeah. Well, good for him. This inning, they got him off the hook. And Boyd will be responsible because he's going to be responsible for two of those runs. a little low. They were able to get the Schreiber last Sunday in Detroit. They get him here again uh, tonight. And there's a base hit in the left field. Domingo's coming around third. It. Mancelino will send him home. Here's the throw. It's cut off, or they tried to cut it off and missed. And so not only do you get a run, but Roberto gets into scoring position as well. So give Perez his first RBI on the year, and it's a four-run six for the Tribe. That's going to be it for Schreiber. Ron Gardenhire is going to go back to that Tigers bullpen. But boy, Roberto Perez following up Santana with another two-out RBI hit. Slider middle of the plate. And after you get the first two-out hit, it relieves some of the tension and pressure off the other guys, and they add on. It was not you had to send a bad throw not a good job by Paredes you got to try to cut pick, that thing yeah. off yes but hey the Indians will take it and the Tigers will go back to their bullpen and the Indians have a four to one lead we'll be right back lineup of the latest tribe gear and collectibles for the entire family visit Indians.com slash team shop for hours and details. Indians come through in the clutch finally. Two out hitting. Back to back hits. To give them four runs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. New pitcher is Brian Garcia. Coming on for the 12th time. He pitched an inning in a third in last night's game. Gave up a hit and a walk. John Schreiber went a third of an inning, made 22 pitches, but a key walk with two outs to Jordan Luplo and then Domingo Santana with a three run double, Roberto Perez, an RBI single. Delano to Shield spot in the order taken over by Greg Allen after he came out of the game. And so he is the eighth man to bat in the inning. Greg looking for his first hit of the year. A little chopper to first. And the inning is over. But the Indians are up for four in the sixth. Domingo Santana delivers. Luplo hustles home, and Tristan McKenzie is loving every minute of it in his major league debut. Well, Tristan McKenzie just three weeks ago turned 23. Today made his major league debut. And he was as advertised, according to Shane Bieber, and he couldn't have been more appropriate in his description. Ten strikeouts and Rick command of all of his pitches. Yeah, it was a beautiful thing to see. 71% strikes, 56 strikes out of 79 total pitches. Uh, never threw it. He had a 21 pitch second inning, but other than that, he was great. You look at our stat cast, Google 3D and, and McKenzie. You see the slider with one. Four seamer had nine of them. He was uh, outstanding. 17 swings and misses, six outs on three pitches or less. And the most strikeouts in a major league debut for the Cleveland Indians. He's in the number two spot right now. More than the big man, Herbie Score. Tiant is number one with 11. Some kind of impressive. Yeah, it was a, what a great. Debut. 
And he's in line for the win if the bullpen can hold. Miguel Cabrera spins out of the way of a fastball. He has struck out twice tonight. Nick Wickman on for the 12th time this year. And a good off speed pitch. A slider. And that's one on one. I've noticed something watching Cabrera. And it's only because we've seen him for so many years. One of the elite hitters in the game of baseball. But it's you can it's interesting how you can see the way he's swinging. He's just a tick off and and that's all it takes in this game. And as you say that when a player starts to slow you know when the bat speed starts to slow down. You have to do something so you start to cheat a little bit to get to the inside pitch or, or to start the bat a little bit earlier. We're seeing him usually those balls that he's fouled off to the right side tonight. Normally he would have just served those in the right field. He'd have two or three hits tonight. 37 years old yeah. it catches up to you eventually and you, you lose that bat speed. You know you can be pitched to they elevate the fastball. He has a tough time catching up with the fastball. Jonathan scope. Skies one in the center field. Greg Allen makes the catch. Greg Allen came on for Delano to Shields, who left with left hip tightness, is what we're told. And we've had some say that he looked like he was wincing earlier in the game when he was running down first base early in the game, too. So we'll find out afterwards, Matt. But this could be something that's been bothering him for yeah. a little bit before tonight. Gamer Candelario doubled his last time up. One of only two hits allowed by McKenzie tonight. And what was really impressive about Tristan tonight, it, you know, as if everything in, in and of itself wasn't impressive, but when he gave up the home run to Willie Castro in the fourth, struck out the next hitter. Next hitter flied out, inning over. When he gave up the leadoff double in the fifth, struck out the next three batters. That's what kind of poise that goes along with the power of Tristan McKenzie. Tigers go in order stretch time in Cleveland. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by Universal Windows Direct by one window. Get one free at UniversalWindowsDirect.com. Zero interest, zero payments for 12 months. By Wendy's, enjoy a frosty chino or a breakfast baconator. Tomorrow's looking good at Wendy's. And by Chevy, get behind the wheel of a new Chevrolet and find new roads again. And the bottom of the seventh inning is upon us. Top of the order for Cleveland. Brian Garcia got the last out of the sixth. He'll stay on to pitch the seventh. Cesar Hernandez leading it off. One for three tonight for Hernandez. And that's inside ball one. When I asked Chris Antonetti the other day if tonight was solely a spot start for Tristan McKenzie, or if he pitched well, could this be something that, you know, he becomes a part of the rotation? He wasn't ready to commit. He said it would be something that they would talk about. They would sure. evaluate it and figure out what the best way is to move forward. Pretty safe to say the young man did nothing to hurt his chances oh for sticking God. around. No, you're right. And you know what? You have to discuss it. There's a ball driven deep right field and off the top of the wall for Cesar Hernandez. He's in the second base. He's got another double, and that's number 10 
for Cesar. Boy, he didn't miss a home in his first home run by much. This this missed by about a foot, just under the yellow line and out there in front of the bullpen. On the line, hit it well. Got a fastball. Kept it down and look at the follow through. Good swing. Watch where it hits. Just misses the yellow line, just a little below it. So he'll go into second base with a leadoff double. Depending on what happens elsewhere, that could put him right there near the top of the double standings. Hanser Alberto of Baltimore began the day leading the league with a dozen. And his teammate, Anthony Santander, had 10. So Cesar Hernandez has moved right up there with 10 himself. You know, Rick, I'm just thinking to myself, that's the second time we've seen Cesar hit a double and just miss hitting a home run off the top of the fence. Look at the boys are getting relaxed now. Cesar stops at third on the base hit by Jose Ramirez. He jumped him early. Snaps an 0 for 21 for Jose. Change up. And boy, he goes after it. It's a line drive. Hits it well. So back to back hits, and, and it's just amazing when this team gets its first hit with a runner in scoring position or something with two outs, how everybody else relaxes. Since that uh, Santana double with two outs, uh, you know, in last inning, they're three for four. Mm -hmm. Or if you include the Santana double, four for five. True, but I'm going to say it takes the pressure off that first that, hit. Yeah. Once that first hit is delivered, they yeah. score and they took the lead. It's changed the whole, uh, you know, the Hosey goes up and swings at the first change up and gets a base hit. Perez got his first RBI. Just off the plate. Frankie looking a little quieter in the batter's box. Arch, we talked about it last night in his last at bat late in the game where he hit that ball yeah, the other left way. Left field. And we said maybe something like that could get him. Right. Right. And get him, and he hasn't. But there's him. Oh, that's okay. That he he, <laughs> he hit it on the nose. Nothing he could do about that. But that's a good night at the plate for him, even if he doesn't yes. get another at bat. He's been four good, solid at bats. Uh, uh, agreed. He looked a lot quieter. And then uh, at second base, Scope trying to get that double play. Ramirez getting back, but he was so quick he, in the transfer, he just lost it. But he did catch it. So that'll go as the first out. Von Gardenhire's going to make another move to his bullpen. So we've got a timeout with the Indians up four to one and threatening here in the seventh. I don't want to miss your chance to participate in round two. It's presented by Sports Time Ohio and it runs through September 11th. All the proceeds benefit Cleveland Indians charities, and our mission is to prepare youth for success. So you can get your tickets now at drive5050.com. Kyle Funkhauser. Coming on for Detroit. And Funkhauser will be facing Carlos Santana in nine and two thirds innings over his seven games. He's walked five, struck out six, but he's given up 15 hits. Well, that should add on again. Left field, Stewart backing up. He has no chance to throw out the runner, Cesar Hernandez. And the Indians increase their lead. 5 1. Give Carlos Santana his 13th run batted in on the year. I mean, to your point, I'm going to jump on your wagon there. 
Carlos Santana, normally a patient hitter. How many times, as I said, 27% of his plate appearances right. result in a 3-2 count. Now we got the lead, guys, are, boom, gets on something early. You Try see, the, get that run home. Get, let's do the job. And, he, you know, early in the count, or normally he'll try and maybe hit the ball hard or pull it. There he did a nice little sack fly, got the job done. Run home and add on. Rosie knows when you steal five, that's why they throw over there. Wow, 14 of 18 runs scored with two outs in the last four games. And it's in the hole and a base hit for Reyes. So the first hit parade pitch. continuing. Another first pitch. And we'll step aside right here for a word from Saka. Small business owners save big on health benefits through your local chamber. Ask for the Saka Benefit Plan backed by Anthem. You know, last night it was a two out, two run homer by Fran Mil Reyes. And they also had a two out RBI single from Delano to Shields. So yeah, that, that two out hit. That's been a thing of beauty for the Indians. And they're looking to continue that trend right here with two on, two out, and Jordan Luplo the better. This should be the end of the inning. And it is. Tribe tax one on. We go to the eight. Five one, Cleveland. is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Well the Indians will turn it over now to their setup man James Karinchek. Yeah, Kobe Jones leading off. Looks at a fastball for a strike. This young man's off to a good start. Another curve ball, but that one's off target, and it's two and one. Started him off first pitch fastball and then went to the breaking ball for the next three pitches. Just couldn't find it yet. You can see he's having a little talk with himself. So let's go back to the heater. In the air, right field, and Domingo Santana. One down. Jimmy John's fresh take, uh, as you say, if you're going to give up home runs, make them solo shots. And the Indians, when they've given up home runs, they've been solo shots. That's the highest percentage of solo home runs allowed in the majors. So that's those pretty good. Those right don't there. do you as, they, as much damage as you might think. And there's no rallies going on. You know, you get one run, you clear the bases, and it's over with. And they get, you know, you settle in. They don't really hurt you that much. That's a, that's nice when you can if you give up homers make them solo shots. 
I know you can't pick it, but they've done a great job to this point. That's just being aggressive as a pitcher, not wanting to walk anybody, and guys are going to, you know, shoot you if you make mistakes once in a while, which is okay. Upstairs and no chance. 97 miles an hour, and Christian Stewart is out number two. Just elevate this. Look at that. No chance. 97 down to the count, 0 2. And Romine has struck out twice tonight. This this is where Karen check he could stay with that fastball this whole inning and not even mix in another curveball and be just fine. Just make sure you execute it and you change the location of it a couple of times because not many teams can catch up to a 95, 96, 97 mile an hour fastball. Foul ball off the bat, but right into the glove. Couldn't do much with it. Ate him up with another good fastball, and James Karinchek with another notch on his belt. A one, two, three, eight. Back in the sixth inning, the Indians took command of the game. It was Domingo Santana delivering a two out three run double with the bases loaded. That took the Indians from a one run deficit to a three one lead. And then Roberto Perez followed with a two out RBI single. Yeah, that capped off a four run inning. It gave. Uh, Tristan McKenzie a chance to be the winner in this ball game, but they, they erupted and then they added one the next inning. And it's a 5 1 ball game. Well pitched game by the Indians. Just two hits allowed tonight. There's a ball hit to right field. Reyes makes the catch. Stay tuned for Indians Live. 
post game presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's coming your way right after we wrap things up here tonight. Alan Jensen will be along to talk uh, primarily about the debut of Tristan McKenzie and how the offense rallied to support him late to put him in line for a victory if the bullpen can finish this one off tonight. Roberto Perez, an RBI knock in that six. We just showed it to you a moment ago. And there's out number two. Let's get a word from Spectrum Mobile. Spectrum Mobile. Unlimited talk, text, and data. Just $45. Yeah, Greg Allen will bat for the second time tonight. That 2 2 and Greg Allen out in front of it. Right field charging in Reyes. He can't get there. Heck of an effort, and Greg Allen will hold with a two out single. Reyes with an all out diving attempt, but all he could do was smother it. Well, and so Greg Allen has a two out single. Nice here attempt. In the eighth inning. Nice attempt. And it looked like it got a piece of his glove, but he had a long way to run. And it hits the ground, goes off, and holds him to a single, though. That's the first time. Greg Allen has had a two strike base hit in a long time. Back to the top of the order. The same cannot be said for Cesar Hernandez. He has a slew of two strike hits this year. He came in with 17 second most in the majors. And only. David Fletcher of the Angels. Couldn't read oh, second base. Right yeah, yeah, right. He has 19, so I mean Hernandez is he puts up a quality at yeah. bat. I mean he gets in that batter's box. It doesn't matter what side of the plate that he, he makes a pitcher work. He's got a game plan. He sticks to it. He, he's uh, well you can see why he plays 161 games a year. He plays out there every day. Steady performer. Yeah, very consistent. Greg Allen takes off. Yeah. And the throw not in time. 
Why not? You got the lead. Go ahead and try and get yourself in scoring position. Good jump. Head down. He does take a quick peek back. Ninth steal of the year for the Indians. Well, a few guys that I see that don't wear gloves anymore when they're trying to steal. Usually somebody has a, another pair of gloves to put on if they're going to run. Line drive, base hit, left field. Greg Allen's coming around third. They'll wave him. Oh, Stewart yeah. once again throws. This time it is cut off. It's 6 1 Cleveland and Hernandez. Will be tagged out to end the inning. But Cesar with his third hit of the night. And the Indians are up five. Storylines tonight brought to you by McDonald's. It was all about Tristan McKenzie in his major league debut tonight. That's what we were locked in on, wanted to see. How he would pitch in his debut in front of no fans, the no show, but uh, he brought the energy and the excitement with him. He was outstanding. Welcome to the show. It was like he's been here for a while. He went out, was dealing 10 strikeouts, number two in Indians history for a debut with strikeouts. Adam Simber coming on for the tribe now. Isaac Paredes. 0 for 2 has struck out twice. Tyler Naquin in for Domingo Santana in right field. Low chopper to third. Jose Ramirez on the run with a good throw. One away. Victor Reyes 0 for 3 on the night takes a strike. Deep into the left field corner, it's a fair ball. And by the time Luke Lowe can get to it, it's a double for Reyes. Not much you can do about that. No, slicing away from Luke Lowe and left. It's good. No, down automatic double pretty much. That was a slider on the outside part of the plate. You see it stays fair. You can see the spin it had on it. Nothing you can do about it. Only the, the third hit for Detroit tonight.
upstairs. Willie Castro accounting for the Tigers only run tonight with the home run back in the fourth inning. Up on the infield. Two down. And Miguel Cabrera over three to the plate. Well, Matt, two of the times that Miguel Cabrera came up tonight, he struck out versus Tristan McKenzie, who made his debut tonight. No, I have nothing against older people. I love Arch, and I'm not making calling Miggy old. But Tristan McKenzie was five years old when Miggy Cabrera made his first major league appearance. Way back when, just and that was his first career strikeout. How about that? You're into age, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we all got our thing, Arch. <laughs> Don't worry, man. It won't be long before you're old, too. I'll, hey, trust me, my back and knees are telling me already. Miguel Cabrera way out in front. Well, I mean, McKenzie at times tonight not only overpowered Miguel Cabrera but some of those other younger hitters yes. too. Yeah I mean, his did. stuff has that extra giddy up. You made the point that I love that I paid attention to after the home run to Castro he locked in after the double he locked in to me that's a sign of a picture. Yeah of maturity. This should do it Jose Ramirez with the throw it's on the money and the Indians bounce back and beat the Tigers by a final score of six to one and. Tristan McKenzie gets the win in his major league debut, allowing just a run on two hits and six innings of work. The Indians are now 17 and 10 on the year, and the Tigers drop to 10 and 15. The loss will go to Matthew Boyd, who is now 0 and 4 on the year. Well, a great, great night for a young man. Kristen McKenzie. Congratulations on that first win that you couldn't do it any better. He went six innings, 10 punch outs. The offense, boy, they got the hitting at the right time. They waited to that sixth inning before they scored, but um, a big two out base hit by Domingo Santana, followed up by Perez's first RBI, and they added on from there. So they couldn't have scripted it any better. Agreed. Uh, you know, just. Anytime you you have a hiccup like last night you want to get back on the field you want to get that winning feeling back you hand the ball to a rookie who's never pitched in the big leagues before yeah. you don't know what's going to happen and it couldn't have played out any better congratulations to Tristan McKenzie it's time to uh, step aside for tonight we'll be back with you tomorrow afternoon for the series finale Indians live pregame at 1230 first pitch at one o'clock stay tuned Alan Jensen will wrap it up next. <laughs>